exposing cults part two we're going to be expo exposing satanism wicca and also freemasonry now the cult definition in modern english is a social group that's defined by unusual religious spiritual or philosophical beliefs and rituals or common interest in a personality an object or a goal let me make this very clear as we talk about some very dark things tonight i'm going to be using discretion as i share about these these cults that we're going to talk about all three of these cults the satanism the wicca and the freemasons these will open you up to demonic spirits if you are engaging in these if you are involved in these if you're in the chat if you're watching this broadcast and you're involved in satanism or wicca or the freemasons you're opening yourself up to demon power and the only way to get delivered from demons is by the power of jesus the bible says that jesus in luke 11 cast out spirits by the finger of god so outside of a, a, an encounter with jesus or an encounter with the spirit-filled believer that t comes in the authority of jesus you are going to live your life in bondage this is no game this is no joke these are not just philosophies these are not just philosophical arguments tonight i'm not just giving you information there is a spiritual realm that is real and if you're dabbling in these things, you're playing in the devil's playground. And the devil comes to still kill, destroy. He's not playing games. We're going to expose these things. Also, let me note this. There's a lot of sexual things related to these cults, specifically Satanism, that I'm not going to be discussing. I'll, I'll talk briefly about the sexual side, but a, a lot of it is just too dark to go on live stream and talk about. There's kids watching as well. So just know I will use discretion. I don't want to water it down. So there will be some raw things I talk about, but I also am not going to go into the depths of darkness and start talking about the rituals that they do and the details of the, se the sexual nature of Satanism or of Wicca or of Freemasonry masonry but we're going to break it down and give you the most information that we can okay so let's start with satanism i pulled this from lots of different sites i spent hours studying so you didn't have to all of these things so these are from a bunch of different websites some gospel coalition articles some wikipedia articles some articles from the satanic temple we're going to go directly to their website look at the satanic temple's website and then later we're going to be watching a video of two wiccans giving their take on things showing how they do spells showing and i'm going to show you how it's not innocent like they say and we're going to expose these so far first we're going to start with if you're taking notes satanism okay this is a broad term for those who worship or use satan as the center point of their religion there's different types of satanism there's one atheistic satanism which is the church of the satanic temple and then there's the satanism that does believe in satan in a supernatural sense but here's what i want to say they're all many of these satanistic religions are going to say we don't believe in satan yet they will plaster satanic satanic imagery satanic symbols satanic items and rituals all over their 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 what they do so don't let the devil fool you the bible says he comes as an angel of light they say they don't believe in the real satan but trust me they are invoking satan's name they are invoking the power of satan the devil's goal is to not get you to think he's real so you might say how could the satanic temple which they do say that he's not real because the devil's goal is to not be real he doesn't want anyone to know he's real although they worship him although they post images of him although they do rituals which we'll look at some of satan's strategies in the bible later his plan is for them to not think for us to not think he's real so satan satanism any of the various religious or countercultural practices and movements are centered on the figure of Satan, the devil, regarded, and many of these information I'm getting here is not even Christian stuff, it's just literal facts on them. So if they're Satanists and you're saying, that's not what we believe, I'm getting this directly from your guys' website. So they, the centerpiece is the, the Satan, the devil, regarded in Christianity as the embodiment of absolute evil. Satan is a real person, he's a real angel, a real spirit that could be in one place at one time, he's not a joke, it's not a game, he's not at all place at all time. Okay, historical Satanism, also called devil worship, consists of the belief and worship and of the Judeo-Christian Judeo devil and the explicit rejection of the antithesis God in Christianity, God's incarnation, Jesus Christ. So historical Satanism is called devil worship, consists of belief in the Satan that we talk about in Judeo-Christian. The Judeo-Christian belief, we teach about Satan historical satanism worships that satan okay it was traditionally based on the black mass or a corrupted rendition of the christian eucharist and ritual magic um evocations of satan some more recent forms of spiritual or theistic satanism recognize satan as an independent non-christian deity so they're saying this is not the satan of the bible the satan that you guys worship these this is the new type of satanism not the historical type other modern satanic movements, including the U.S.-based US Church of Satan, which was founded in 1966, celebrate Satan not as a god, but as a symbol of supposedly anti-Christian moral values or as a pre-Christian life principle. 
Such movements may be atheistic, agnostic, or deistic. So some of them don't believe in God. Some of them believe there is a God. Some of them, or some of them believe there is a God, but they can't understand him. And some of them believe that you can know God. They do not promote, and this is what an article I studied said, they do not promote or practice evil in a literal sense, which that's obviously not true, but they may profess extreme forms of individualism and ethic egoism and may reject traditional Abrahamic religions, particularly they reject Christianity as hypocritical or repressive. So let me just lay the framework of Satanism and the Satanic church and say a uh, devil worship. The basic framework is we reject Christianity. We worship Satan who to them is a rebel and to us is a rebel. And Satan goes against everything the Christian Judeo church teaches. And so we are going to worship the rebel, the Satan, the one that the Christian church is afraid of. And again, they say they don't believe in him, but this is the person that they worship. And they say they don't promote evil, but I'll literally show you later from their own website, they do promote evil. So first let's look at the Church of Satan founded in 1966 by Anton LaVey. This is where Satanism really became popular. Satanism really became known here in America was by Anton LaVey in San Francisco. The Church of Satan is a count countercultural group founded in the United States in the 60s by Anton LaVey. And he was 1930, he was born, he died in 1997. Born Howard Stanton LaVey, contrary to his name, the church did not promote evil, but rather humanistic values. LaVey, a formal carnival worker, had absorbed a variety. Look at this. Okay, so they didn't promote evil, but look at this. LaVey, a carnival worker, had absorbed a variety of occult and ritual magic teachings over the years, which he incorporated into the tenets of the church he founded in May Eve 1966, April 30th. His appearance on U.S. television and other media coverage attracted initial converts, although there were never more than a few thousand members at any one time. Reports of the colorful rituals held in LaVey's San Francisco home, which he painted, which he had painted black, kept the church in the news. Several celebrities, including James Mansfield and Sammy Davis Jr., associated with the church. LaVey set down the teachings and the rituals of the Church of Satan in the Satanic Bible in 1969. The church did not worship Satan, this is what they say, as the Christian embodiment of evil or even an existing being. Instead, LaVey taught that his infernal majesty was a symbol of humanistic values such as self-assertion, rebellion against unjust authority, vital existence, and undefiled wisdom. LaVey's term for wisdom without any admixture of error, rituals were designed as a psychodrama that encouraged members to develop their ego and to leave behind their lives as submissive weaklings, including the rituals of black mass, complete with nude females used as at an altar. And there was a lot of sexual rituals they did that I won't even go into. There's a lot of sexuality, a lot of magic that was going that go went on in the Church of Satan, which we'll talk about too as well. Uh, during, during the early years of the church, LaVey authorized the formation of local chapters or grottos across the United States. In the 70s, a number of schisms occurred, including the defection of one of his key lieutenants, Michael Aquino, who founded the rival Temple of Set. We won't go into the Temple of Set. The, the Temple of Set was a spinoff from the Church of Satan. Set was an Egyptian god, like the devil that they worship. They believed that Set, that's S-E-T, was greater than the devil. And so the Temple of Set was one of his best friends that spun off and the, the Temple of Set is still around. In response to the schisms, LaVey disbanded the grottos, but the church continued as a loose affiliation of individual members associated with national headquarters. In 1997, following LaVey's death, Blanche, uh, Blanche Barton became the leader of the church. Many details of LaVey's early life are disputed or unknown. Soon after he was born, his family moved to the San Francisco Bay Area, which I was born about 20 minutes from San Francisco. According, that's a random fact. I don't know why I threw in. According to some accounts, he left high school to join a circus. He worked as a psychic at a, and a nightclub organist, among many other occupations occupation. So he was very involved in the occult, very involved in the new age, very involved in spirituality, very involved in reading divination, reading cards, things like that. Having changed his name to Anton in 1966, he founded the church of Satan, calling himself the high priest, um, during a certain night and a rich, uh, it's which he set down teachings in the satanic Bible of his church. He claimed that his brand of Satanism was inspired by having noticed as a teenager. Look at this. I need you guys all to key in on this. Okay. 4,000 of you watching, everybody needs to listen to this. He claimed that his brand of Satanism was inspired by his having noticed as a teenager, he noticed this, that the men he saw at church on Sunday praying for God for absolution were the same men he saw at burlesque shows on Saturday night. Whoo! He starts the Satanic, the Church of Satan. He pursues Satanism. He's the real one of the head guys in the U.S. because he saw people, the guys on Sunday 
were out there, you know, praying to God, and then he saw those same guys at the burlesque show, which is like a strip club, at the burlesque show on Saturday night. So hypocrisy in the church was the reason why he went into Satanism. I thought that was very interesting. LaVey's Satanism was in fact atheistic. The opposition between God and Satan presented for him the struggle between hypocrisy and repression on one hand and the indul indul uh, indulgence and liberation on the other. LaVey was also not a nihilist. He instructed his followers to obey the law and taught indulgence and pleasure is only beneficial if you don't harm others. And what you'll see about Satanism is it's much about self-pleasure. It's a lot about worship of self, becoming your own God, doing what you want to do. LaVey's personality was greater than the Church of Satan, which membership really never exceeded 2000 and declined into a, another group called the Temple of Set, formed in 1975, and then it goes on and on. Okay, the Satanic Bible, which was what Anton LaVey was known for constructing or writing. I won't go into the whole Satanic Bible because it's not glorifying or necessary, but I'll go into some of it just to prove to you how evil Satanism is. The Satanic Bible is composed of four books. Again, I've researched this so that you don't have to. The Book of Satan, Look, listen to this the book of Lucifer, the book of Belial, and the book of Leviathan. Okay, some of you are like, Leviathan's not a demon. Well, there's a book of Leviathan in the Satanic Bible. So, Satanic Bible, four books compose the book of Satan, the book of Lucifer, the book of Belial, and the book of Leviathan. The book of Satan, listen to this, challenges the Ten Commandments and the Golden Rule and promotes Epicureanism. The book of Lucifer holds the most of the philosophy of the Satanic Bible with 12 chapters discussing things like, this is the Satanic Bible, self-indulgence, love, hate, and sex. And there's entire books in the Satanic Bible all about sex, orgies, and other things I won't go into. LeVay also used the book to dispel uh, rumors surrounding the religion. In the book of Belial, LeVay details rituals and magic. So here you have a guy who says, I don't believe you know, in that supernatural devil and everything like that, but an entire book is dedicated to rituals and magic in the book of Belial. Um, he discusses the required mindset and the focus for performing a ritual, provides instructions for three rituals, sex rituals, compassion rit rituals, and destruction rituals. Now the Satanists that come out of the Satanic movement with Anton LaVey, they believed that black magic was only allowed to be used if you really needed it or if somebody was evil coming against you. So it was basically like this. Everything's fine with white magic. Anton LaVey had no problem with rituals, magic. Again, in the book of Belial, teaches you how to do spells. But his belief was if somebody wrongs you, then he teaches you spells of destruction when somebody is wronging you. So here you have a guy, and you're going to see a lot of hypocrisy and Satanism as I go here. Here you have a guy that says, don't believe in the supernatural, don't believe in the devil, don't believe in this, but then teaches rituals, magic, and how to do destruction spells in the book of Le um, Belial. The book of Leviathan provides four invocations for Satan. And the four invocations of Satan are lust, compassion, and destruction, um, which that's three. I don't know why they're so, citing four invocations. There must be one more. It's all, it also lists the 19 Enochian keys adapted from John D's Enochian keys provided both in the Enochian and the English language. The prologue of the Satanic Bible begins by discussing the concept of God, of, the concept of God, good and evil, the human nature, and includes nine Satanic statements. So these are the nine Satanic statements. Again, they're saying it's not evil, it's not bad, it's humanistic. Here's the nine Satanic statements the Bible opens with, the Satanic Bible. Satan represents indulgence instead of abstinence. Listen to this. This is what they teach. Satan represents indulgence, not abstinence. So where the Christian, Judeo-Christian Bible teaches abstinence from things like same-sex relations, orgies, uh, death, and, or murder, and corruption, and, and every evil, vile thing, the Satanic Bible, the very first statement is, we teach indulgence. So you can indulge in the things that the Bible says not to indulge in. Basically, the rule of God, God saying, don't do this, this is wrong, this is right, we don't we throw that out the window in satanism because now there's no rules you can be your own god this is all about indulgence number two satan represents vital existence instead of spiritual pipe dreams so this is realism okay what's real and this whole spiritual jesus god thing is not real that's what they teach number three satan represents undefiled wisdom instead of hypocritical self-deceit so what they're doing here is they're coming against the ten commandments they're going against the word of god and this is the interesting part to me Satanists say God's not real. They deny the existence of God, yet they spend their entire religion and worship of Satan going against what the Bible teaches, going against God. So you don't believe God's real as a Satanist, yet you spend all of your teachings going against the very things of God. Okay, number four, Satan represents kindness. This is in the Satanic Bible. Kindness to those who deserve it instead of love wasted on ingrates. So again, you could see 
only those that deserve it get love. And then they say, instead of wasted on those who are not worth it, which the Bible teaches, we love even our enemies. Number five, Satan represents vengeance instead of turning the other cheek. Another biblical reference. Satan represents you get vengeance on them. You don't turn the other cheek. And they say, this is innocent. This is not a bad religion. And look at the evilness that it's already promoting. Satan represents responsibility to the responsible instead of concern for psychic vampires. Satan represents man as just another animal, sometimes better, more often worse than those that walk on all fours, who because of his divine spiritual intellectual development has become the most vicious animal of all. So man is just another animal, which makes sense because they teach of self-indulgence, not abstinence. So if you teach self-indulgence, man is an animal, they say. This is what Satanism teaches. Man could follow. The difference between a human and an animal is a human is a, an animal is goes after its own desires. It has no moral compass. It's it's a uh, it's an it's how do I say the word? It basically just chases after. I, I can't think of the word. My mind's at a loss here. But animals have no type of moral compass. They just chase indulgences, instinct. They just go after instinct. They don't worry. They just follow their instincts and humans have the moral compass. So the satanic Bible, the last thing it really teaches is we're like animals. We're not, you know, we don't have any moral compass. Okay. Satan represents all of the so-called sins as they lead to physical, mental, or emotional gratification. So the number eight is the embodiment of Satan is representing all sins, which lead to physical, mental, or emotional gratification. And then number nine is Satan has been the best friend the church has ever had as he has kept in, as he has kept it in business all these years. The nine satanic statements outline the basic ideology of Levon, Anton, Le, I'm sorry, Levon, Levain, Levay's Satanism and has become sort of the guiding principle of Levayan Satanism. The third book, and I'm just going to touch on this, and we have a lot to cover, so we'll keep moving. The third book of the Satanic Bible describes rituals and magics. Magic, according to Joshua Gunn, these are adapted from books of ritual magic, such as Crawley's Magic, Elementary Theory. The Satanic Rituals, published by LeVay in 1972, outline the rituals more precisely and contain the entire text of performing a black mass. LeVay begins the book of Belial by defining magic as the change in situations or events in accordance with one's will, which would usually normally be accepted methods be unchanged unchangeable. He explains that some of the rituals are simply applied psychology of, or science and that some contain part of no scientific basis. Okay, so the whole that whole book of Belial is about spells and magic. LeVay explains that in order to control a person, you must first attract their attention. He gives three qualities that can be deployed for this purpose, sex appeal, sentiment, and wonder. He also advocates the use of odor. In the book of Belial, he discusses three types of rituals, rituals for sex, rituals for compassion, and rituals for destruction. Um, sex rituals are used to entice other people, compassion rituals, improve your health, intelligence, success, and so on. And destruction, destruction rituals are used to destroy other people. LaVey advocates finding others whom to practice satanic rituals with in order to affirm your faith and avoid antisocial behavior. He particularly advocates group participation for destruction rituals as compassion and sex rituals are more private in nature. LaVey goes on to list the key components to successful rituals, which of course I won't go into because I don't want you getting that curious. This is desire, timing, imagery, direction, and the balance factor. Um, details of these very satanic rituals are explained in the book of Belial and they list things you need in these rituals like clothing, altars, the symbols of Baphomet, Baphomet and many other things. And I won't go into detail. So the embodiment of the Satan, the Bible talks about. So that's what the satanic church is. But the embodiment of the Satan, the Bible talks about is a, de, a Satan of pride, a God of pride, a lowercase God. Ezekiel 28, 17 tells us your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You're corrupted for the sake. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. The very first, the sin that caused Satan to fall out of heaven was the sin of pride. He's in the presence of God. He's in a, a holy place. And because the pride in his heart, Ezekiel says he was struck down now. And this is the very essence of Satanism. This is the very essence of the satanic church. Pride was the very for sin that caused the fall of Lucifer. Okay, in Lucifer's five I wills, the Bible says that we look at, we'll see Isaiah talks about, Ezekiel also talks about, is the first I will ascend into the heavens. So Satan's first goal was being in the same position God was, receiving worship like God, being his own God, which is what Satanism teaches. Satanism teaches you can be your own God. Friend, this is the backbone of atheism and the backbone of the satanic movement is you don't need anybody telling you what to do. There's no moral law. We don't want no one to tell us what to do. And so we're going to be anti-God. We're going to be atheistic that we will be our own gods. That's the path of Satanism. That's the, the path the world wants. The reason why the world shakes their fist at God, they don't want anybody telling them what to do. They go, we will ascend into the heaven. We will be like God himself. 
We will have you praise us. We will have you worship us. This is not what celebrities desire. We will have you serve us, pledge your allegiance to us. This is Satan's agenda in the earth to puff you up with pride. Uh, the God of this world and then the God of heaven. The God of heaven teaches humility, that's the capital G, and the God of this world teaches pride, arrogance, and being your own God. Then he says, number two, the, the Satan of the Bible says, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. So he says, I want authority, and the stars of God are the angels. So he says, I want to have authority over the other angels, which we know Satan in the Bible convinces one third of the angels to rebel with him. So Satan now is convincing the other angels to rebel with him. He wants to be exalted above the other angels. Revelation 12, 4 describes the fall of the angels. So here he is now wanting to take over, wanting to expand his sphere of influence, wanting to, to have more power than he's supposed to have. Number three, he says, I will sit upon the mount of congregation from the sides of the north. This means he wants to rule where God rules. Because if you see in scripture, the north side, the north side in scripture relates to God's presence. Psalms 48 talks about the millennial reign of Christ where God rules from the north. So Satan said, I want to be in control of what God's supposed to be in control of. You do know that Satan is a control freak. He wants to control every single part of you to control your relationships, control your mind, control decisions you make. Then fourthly, he said, I will, or fourth, fourthly isn't a word, but fourth, he said, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. A hundred out of the 150 verses the word cloud is in the Bible speaks of divine glory. So Satan said, I want to glorify myself and surpass the glory of God. I want to ascend above the heights of the clouds. Again, a hundred times in scripture, clouds represent the glory of God. Paul reveals Satan's ultimate desire and tells us what will happen prior to the return of Christ when talking about the great rebellion. Paul says this in 2 Thessalonians 2, 4, he will exalt himself and defy everything people call God and every object of worship. He will even sit in the temple of God. This is the Antichrist. He will even sit in the temple of God claiming that he himself is God. So we see in the end time, Satan will claim to be God sitting in the temple of God. Okay, the number five, I will be like the most high God. This is Satan's goal in the Bible. He wants to be like the Most High God. He wants to have authority over the heavens and earth. Matthew 28, Jesus said, All power is given to me in heaven and on earth. And Satan is longing to control earth and the heavenly realms. He's seeking complete dominion and global domination. And we are the resistance in the earth against Satan. Okay, so that's the Satanist they teach. That's the Satan of the Bible's desires. And then here you have the Satanic temple, which the reason why I want to touch on the Satanic temple before I go into Wicca uh, and Wiccans is because the Satanic temple is this generations of the church of Satan. The church of Satan was old school. Okay. Kind of died off. It's, you don't really see about it anymore. Like you did in the sixties, the seventies, the eighties, the nineties. But the satanic temple is now the new version of that, okay? So the satanic temple is not the church of Satan. These are different movements. Founded in 2013, the satanic temple has overtaken the church of Satan as the most popular organization for Satanists in America. Although both share the ideology of atheistic Satanism, the two groups oppose the core activities of the other. As the satanic temple claims, the church of Satan expresses vehement opposition of the campaigns and activities of the satanic temple, asserting themselves as the only true argument Arbiters of Satanism, while the Satanic Temple dismisses the Church of Satan as irrelevant and inactive. Okay, so here you have the Church of Satan denying the Satanic Temple has authority to worship or pray Satan, and the Church and and the Satanic Temple saying they're irrelevant and inactive. They're old school. So this is the Satanic Temple, and I'm going to show you how evil they are because they say they're not evil. We're going to look at their tenets, but I'm going to go to their website and show you how absolutely evil they are. All right. Since its founding, the Satanic Temple has primarily focused on reactionary attention-grabbing stunts, such as lobbying Satanic displays alongside nativity scenes and Ten Commandments on public property, starting the After School Satan Club. If you haven't heard about that, that is a club they have now where they teach you about kids, your kids about Satan. For elementary schools in response to the Evangelical Christian Good News Club and filing lawsuits against Netflix and Warner Bros. over depictions of their Baphomet statue on television series, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. So here you have the Satanic Temple. Okay, they say they're not evil. They say they don't believe in the devil as a real person. So they don't believe in none of that. So let's now go. I hope this works because we're trying something a little bit different here. Okay, here we go. We're going to change it up here. Let's look at now, since they don't believe in all that. This is the Satanic Church's website, okay? Again, I want to remind you guys. Can you see that? Type one in the chat if you can see that good. I want to remind you they don't believe in Satan being real. They don't believe they're atheistic. They don't believe in God. They don't believe Satan's real. This is their website. This is the relevant Satanism today, okay? Here you have, you know, the pentagram, the Baphomet stat, uh, face, everything like that, Satanic tape, 
satanic temple. This is the first thing on the, their home group of their website. This is the first page. Look at this. The satanic temple demands Texas recognize, and I know I'm going to get, you know, a little flag here for saying this, but I don't care, demands te Texas to recognize religious right to perform abortion post row. Okay, so they want abortion to be legal. So they're not evil, they're not bad, but the first thing they advocate for is abortion. The Satanic Temple has petitioned the state of Texas, look at this, to allow Satanic Temple members the ability to continue receiving voluntary abortions, voluntary abortions, which is the murder of a baby, as part of a religious ritual. Texas trigger ban on abortions took effect after the reversal of Roe v. Wade, which prohibited all abortions, this is, a, I love this line, prohibited all abortions for any reason including instances of rape or incest. The Satanic Temple claims that this ban infringes on its members' right to practice their religion and request uh, Texas recognizes members' religious rights. On September 1st, 2021, and they talk about a rule, and this is what it says, look at this. The Satanic Temple filed a lawsuit against te Texas, which prohibits its members from performing a religious ritual to remove non-viable fetal tissue up to 24 weeks of pregnancy, which at 24 weeks, 100 at conception life happens but 24 weeks of pregnancy a hundred percent that's a baby that's that's a person in there okay the motion was made so here they go talking about looking beyond so the satanic temple was the one if you guys don't remember i did a video was the one saying that this is a ritual that we do abortion is a ritual that we do so we want to be able to do this because this is just our abortion ritual there's no big deal on it so this is their things okay looking beyond texas all of their stuff if you go to about them they have their tenants which look at the hypocrisy here these are the seven fundamental tenets of the satanic temple. Number one, one should strive to act with compassion and empathy towards all creatures. Look at this, in accordance with reason. Okay, their first tenet is compassion against all creatures. Yet, the very thing that they're trying to push right now is abortion rituals. Do you guys see the hypocrisy here? So we're supposed to have compassion, but they're pushing abortion rituals? Number two, the struggle for justice is an ongoing and necessary pursuit that should prevail over laws and institutions. One's body is inviolable, subject to one's own will alone, which contradicts number one, because we're supposed to have compassion and empathy, yet you're saying that we're subject to our will alone. We can basically do whatever we want. The free th freedoms of others should be respected, including the freedom to offend, to willfully and unjustly encroach upon the freedoms of others. Is, okay, so these are all just hypocrisy. Beliefs should conform to best scientific understanding of the world. People are fallible. Uh, every tenant is a guiding principle. And then they go on and on. Now, again, guys, I want to remind you of something. They're not, they don't believe in the devil. They're not bad. They're not satanic. Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? Like, you want to talk about hypocrisy and Christianity? They don't believe in the devil. And it's not like there's a whole bunch of satanic symbolism here. Not like this is all about the satanic. And they will go on to convince you how Satan's not real. Yet they have a picture of Satan falling right here. Okay, so they have all these things, memberships, they have churches, they have the after school Satan program, they have congregations, they talk about, you know, they don't worship Satan, they don't promote evil. Of course the devil would say that. Of course he would say they're not bad. If they, they said, yes, we're dark and evil, we're bad, then do you think anyone would join them? Okay, so let's go to satanic ministry. Are you guys seeing this? They have satanic ministry. Do you want to be a minister of the satanic temple? Again, we don't believe in the devil, we're not bad. Let's look at satanic weddings, okay? Again, this, this isn't evil. They say they're not bad. They're nothing wrong. And this is the popular Satanism today. Discover satanic weddings, most popular ceremonies. Are you guys seeing this on screen? Look at these rituals here. You can get married, look at right here. You could have this ritual package, candle ritual wedding package. You could have the blood ritual wedding package, the hand fasting ritual wedding, all demonic symbolism, all satanic. Look at this knife and blood dripping. You can get a gift card here, the boutique. You can buy items. Look, you could have a nice little picture of you looking like a demon in Salem, Massachusetts. All these things here, and they say they're not satanic. There's no, there's no demonic worship here. There's nothing wrong. And I'm just doing this off the cuff. I haven't looked through this. This is their boutique here on their website. Again, they don't believe in the devil. None of that's real. But look, you could buy ritual candles here. You could buy ritual oil here. Look at this. This innocent little, uh, you know, double-horned headband veil of mu with mushrooms. So, but again. I want to remind you here, none of this is satanic. Inverted cross rosary with an inverted pentagram. None of this stuff is satanic or wrong. This is all just humanism. This is all just self-worship. We don't really believe in none of this. A jar of kitten heart and lungs. Kitten heart, wet specimen. Goat heart, I mean, coyote heart. This is all just trolling, guys. We're just trolling you guys here. This isn't real. You guys, are you guys seeing this? Which by the way, they promote Halloween. If you didn't know, they're big promoters. Ritual candles, horn veil. I got to be careful what I show here because, again, I don't want to get banned. 
You can get the ceremony horns to wear veils. These are the people that say, if you read all their articles and the founder comes on YouTube and says, this isn't real, which I'm sure they'll respond to this because they responded to Vlad today on Twitter, the satanic temple did, you know, saying that he was putting a fake quote up. This is the satanic temple that wants to convince you that wants to tell you that they're not real. We're going to let's okay. So we've covered the satanic. I think we've done a good job at covering Satanism and exposing them. Let's let's cover Wicca now. Okay, so here's Wicca. I'm only focusing on fast growing. Satanism's growing fast. Wicca is growing fast. So here's Wicca now. And again, I've, I've not shown you a lot of the deep rituals and sexual things for the sake of, I don't want to go too deep into it, but let's look at Wicca. Okay. So now we're going to transition to Wicca. Wicca is a modern pagan religion. And this is growing fast. And I want to make you aware of this. Scholars of religion categories as both as new, both old and new religious movement, part of the occultist stream of Western esotericism. It was developed in England during the first half of the 20th century and was introduced to the public in 1954 by Gerald Gardner, a retired British civil servant. Wicca draws upon a diverse set of ancient pagan and 20th century hermetic motifs for its theological structure and ritual practices. Now, let me also say something, because I know people are going to be in the comments. You didn't pronounce this name right. You didn't pronounce the founder's name right. Me pronouncing Islamic names right or Mormon names right or Wiccan names or satanic names the fact that I'm pronouncing them wrong or right doesn't change the fact that they're wrong. So you think that you're, you know, people are saying you didn't, you didn't pronounce the Islamic things right. So you must not be telling the truth. If I don't pronounce it right, does it make it true? It's still false just because I'm not pronouncing some of these crazy words right. Okay. Just making that clear for those that are going to come in the comments and say, you didn't even pronounce it right. Wicca is typ typically duotheistic worshiping and or working with goddess and a god. These are traditional, traditionally viewed as the triple goddess and the horn god. So the two gods that most Wiccans celebrate are the triple goddesses and the horn gods. So those are the two gods. These deities may be regarded as henotheistic way. And if you don't know what these words mean, it doesn't even matter. As many have different divine aspects, which can be in turn identified with many diverse pagan deities from different historical pantheons. For this reason, they're sometimes referred to as the great goddess or the great horn god, with great connoting a deity that contains many other deities in, the na in nature. Some Wiccans refer to the goddess deity as the lady god or lord. In this context, when the lord or lady are used as adjectives, it's another way of referring to them as a divine figure. These two deities are sometimes viewed as facets of a greater pantheistic div divinity, which is regarded as an impersonal force or process rather than a personal deity. While duotheism or bitheism is traditional in Wicca, broader Wiccans' belief is, beliefs range from polytheism to pantheism to monism or even goddess monotheism, which again, you don't know what these mean. You don't need to look them up. There's, they're, they're all equally as dumb. Wiccan celebrations encompass both of the cycle, cycles of the moon, known as esbats, and commonly associated with the goddess, the female deity, and the cycles of the sun. Seasonally based festivals, known as sabbats, and commonly associated with the horn god, the male deity, an unattributed statement known as the Wiccan reed is a popular expression of the Wiccan morality. Although it is not universally accepted by Wiccans, Wicca often involves ritual practice of magic. Here we go again. You know, I want to remind you guys, we're not bad. We're not doing anything here. Ritual magic though it's not always necessary. Many Wiccans believe in magic, a manipulative force, exercise, which is, uh, let me change the word to a demonic force, exercise through the practice of witchcraft or sorcery. Many Wiccans agree that the definition of magic offered by ceremonial magicians such as Aleister Crawley, who declared that magic was the science and art of causing change to occur in conformity with will, while another prominent ceremonial magician, McGregor Mather, stated that it was the science of the control of the secret forces of nature. Here's what they're trying to say. One side of the Wicca Wiccans say it's not really magic it's kind of like you know the art of science causing change to occur and the other side says no there's secret forces of nature at work so it is spiritual many wiccans believe magic to be a law of nature as yet misunderstood or disregarded by contemporary science and as such do not view it as being supernatural but a part of what leo martello calls the superpowers that reside in the natural some wiccans believe magic is simply making the use of the five senses to get results other wiccans do claim to work magic and that it is supernatural all right, during ritual practices, which are often staged in a sacred circle, Wiccans will cast spells or workings intended to bring apart real change in the physical realm. 
Common Wiccan spells include those used for healing, use those for protection, fertility, to banish negative influences. Many early Wiccans, such as Alex Sanders, Cybill Leak, and Alex Winfield, referred to their magic as white magic, which contrasted the black magic, which was associated with evil and Satanism. So the Wiccans say, we don't practice black magic. Let me just tell you something. All magic is bad. All magic is magic. The Bible doesn't say, oh, what white magic's good and black magic's wrong. Black magic, white magic, it's all demonic. It's all influential. It all opens you up to demons in the spiritual realm. And it all has bad, bad results if you mess with this stuff. Okay, the Gospel Coalition gave Gospel Coalition gave nine things about Wicca that I'm gonna I'm gonna refer to. Number one, rich witchcraft refers to the worldview, religion, and practices associated with using rituals that are believed to harness and focus cosmic or psychic energies to bring about desire change. Modern witchcraft is the largest and most common subset of neo-paganism, a diverse group of religious movements and claim they've derived from historical pagan religions. Number two, within the witchcraft revival movement, the largest subset is Wicca. So this is from the Gospel Coalition. The 2008 American Religious Identification Survey estimated that in the United States, there's about 600,000 neo-pagans with about half of them identifying as Wiccans, which is about 300,000. Some estimates conclude that by 2017, there's more than 3 million people practicing Wicca. In mod number three, in modern usage, the term witch is considered a gender neutral and can apply either to men or women. And the term warlock, the term warlock is often considered a derogatory term as the original usage of the term meant an oath breaker. A group of witches who met together regularly are known as a coven. Some witches believe a coven must be 13 or fewer members, but though not less than three. So there has to be at least three with around 13 to be a coven. Number four, Wicca was created in the 1940s by Gerald Brossard Gardner, a retired British civil servant and ordained minister in this Christian sect known as the Ancient British Church. Gardner is considered the father of modern witchcraft, though his neo-pagan beliefs had almost not connection with the older forms of witchcraft. His brand of Wiccanism was taken from the modern influences such as the Freemasons, which we're going to talk about here in a few minutes, the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, and the English occultist Aleister Crowley, which we heard about earlier. Gardner referred to his belief system as witchcraft and witch cult, and the term Wicca did not appear until, the, until 1962. In the 1960s and the 1970s, Wicca spread through the UK and the English-speaking countries, became associated with um, burgeoning feminist and environmental movements, and split into various traditions from Wicca, uh, Gardenerian Wicca, to offshoots of Alexandrian Wicca, Algird Wicca, Georgian Wicca, Druidic uh, Wicca, Sax Wicca, and Eclectic Wicca. The U.S. government recognized Wicca as an uh, official religion in 1985 in a court case involving a prisoner. The federal government argued that the doctrine of the Church of Wicca was not a religion because of a, con a conglomeration of various aspects of the occult, such as faith healing, self-hypnosis, tarot card reading, spell casting, and none of these could be considered religious practice alone. But the court noted and ruled that it was a religion, and so now Wicca is considered an actual religion according to the federal government. Commonly shared core belief of Wicca is the acceptance of the practice of magic. The Wiccan view is similar to that of Aleister Crowley, who defined magic as a science of art, which we talked about earlier. So they do do things about transformation, creation, manifestation, and Wicca magic tool is used energy, quantum, levels of reality. Quantum level is the casual realm, and they go into deep depths on the way they use magic, which I won't go into detail because I don't want to I don't want to start too much of a curiosity that you're going in and looking into this stuff when you shouldn't be dabbling in any of this magic here. All right, aside from a belief in magic, there's few beliefs that all Wiccan traditions share. The belief most is commonly associated with Wicca is the variation of the Wiccan Radi. Radi is from the Middle English meaning advice or counsel. Believed to have been formulated by the Wiccan priestess Doreen Valentine in the early 1960s. The Wiccan read is stated as a harm none, do what ye will. Variations on the read include that it harms no one and it does as it wills. Do as you will as long as it harms no one. Which again, we saw that as part of like the satanic movement. That's the angel of light acting like it's not bad or no big deal and then it, and then the article ends with its oldest form wicca holds a duotheistic belief and they believe in what you talked about earlier the female mother goddess and the male horn god so their god is the male horn and then their goddess is the female goddess okay now i want to look at something again we haven't done before on stream i want to look at let's go back to this screen and let's pull up our youtube video that we have queued up okay we're going to look at a popular youtuber here that did an interview with Wiccans. Again, this is a guy has 6.8 million subscribers and he interviewed this Wiccan and asked them, is this a cult? And I wanna show you some of the stuff here. Experiences, we'll skip through. We'll look at some of the spell demonstrations they do on this guy. 
again, all innocent. That's what you're going to see here. It's all innocent. It's no big deal. But what you're going to see is it's actually dark and sinister, and it's no joke. And the reason why they're going to portray them as innocent and no big deal is to get people in. Even with Freemasonry, which we're going to talk about next, it's to get people in so that you think it's no big deal, so that you can kind of get involved. And if, if this video makes you think, oh, it's no big deal, it's innocent, it sucks you into something much more dark. And this is what the Mormon church does, this is what Islam does. All of these cults, Freemasonry, they try to get you in, they try to make it look light. So let's look at this here. Oh, let me see if it's queued up. Okay. Type one if you can see this on the screen. I know some folks who will say that. So he asks her here, let me make sure the volume's on. Let me play this here. Okay, ask her, is it a cult? Their initiations felt like a culmination of something. For other people, it's the moment itself is that that transitory kind of explosive moment where suddenly you're different. If I were uh, a skeptic, I might hear things like, there was a guy at this point sometime <laughs> within recent history that found this thing and then started spreading his word and then people started becoming initiated into it. I would think cult. Yeah. And that word was used. I think cult is one of those words where we use it usually to mean this religion over here that we don't like. People used to write about the cult of democracy in the United States, this idea of devotion to something, adherence to something. So it's really only in very recent days. As you see, she's trying to downplay it because she's saying they call democracy a cult when there's nothing supernatural and spiritual about democracy and there's everything spiritual about Wiccans and witches. So again, it's it is a cult. The word cult has come to have this blanket kind of negative connotation but amongst my my coven mates yeah we use the word cult most people when they hear so cult, yes assume she says we use that the word it cult. means unquestioning devotion mm -hmm. to a belief system that was taught to you. and that definitely is not who we are if we could be said to have a central virtue it would be autonomy and personal authority my devotion is to my tradition and to my gods it's not my tr my devotion is to my traditions and to my gods plural so you're devoted to multiple gods, which again, the horn goddess, the female goddess. The other witches, and it's certainly not to a founder. Do you cast spells? Do you use magic? Oh yeah, from the very beginning. If you ask most sort of young witches, they'll tell you that magic is the art Another of in manipulating here. supernatural forces to yeah. manifest what you want. Mm -hmm. Not so much. I mean, that's kind of an old model. What is the magic actually? The magic is the flow of the sacred from energy into embodiment. Every See how they downplay it? It's the flow. It's not d demons. It's absolutely demons. That's what it is. Demonic spiritual power. Demons that are flowing through you. Everything's interconnected. And that flow of connection, that relationship, that energy that moves back and forth between us and the plants, which mm. could use a little more water and a little oh, more sun. Oh, we're trying it? not to talk about that. <laughs> Physicists now talk about 13, 14 dimensions of reality. In fact, we operate mostly in three, but the mind has a capacity to experience much more. When you open your mind and open your heart, the sacred comes. What are you opening it to? You're opening your mind and opening your heart. What are you opening it to? Listen, let, let's see what she says here. I haven't, I haven't seen this, by the way. I'm just kind of skipping through. To you. you ask and the energy flows into you. You ask the sacred, the divine, and the energy flows into you. What do you go ahead and type in the chat? What do you guys think about the flow and what do you think they're inviting in? Do you think those are spirits? Do you think that's innocent? What you're inviting she's literally saying right here, this is a wick, this is a witch. She calls herself a witch. She says you're allowing the divine energy into you. And you're allowing demons into you. That's what you're allowing. And it changes you and you work with yes, it. Yes, it changes you. The spirit of depression changes you. The spirit of anger changes you. The spirit of murder changes you. The spirit of lust changes you. The spirit of pride, when they enter into you, she's she's right. They do change you. They do change you into something that you'd never want to be. And that's to be like them. And working with it is casting a spell. I thought it was you had to find five very rare herbs, mix yes. them together in a concoction of your own blood and the blood of some random person. And then you have to mix it up and mash it together. Yeah, no. And then you have to drink it six times. Yeah? Where did you hear this? Stop going on witch talk. And then all your dreams. <laughs> See, they want to make it innocent. That's the goal here. You're like, why is it? Will manifest. A good spell opens your heart, asks for what you need. And then if you wish to, to enhance, you know, the, the asking, you can add herbs and oils. There's an artistry to it. Mm -hmm. And it can be very beautiful. So she, what he just made fun of, she's like, yeah, you could do that. The herbs, the oils, we do use those. But it doesn't have to be anything more than breathing or drinking water 
Or making an offering. Magic potentially involves a Do you see how she slides that in there? Or making an offering. It's like, it's all nice, fun, and games. It's like, or making an offering. What, what, how do you just throw that things. in there? People who will tell you that if you make a wish on your birthday candles and you blow those out, like that's a type of spell. Lots of people have different Again, trying to downplay it. No one's blowing out candles thinking they're casting a spell. All of that potentially is magic. To me, magic can be a useful tool for kind of controlling those things that we might think of as coincidence or luck. It's not gonna fix everything. It puts enough things into play. And so here now, let's go, let's see, magical experiences. Okay, we don't wanna watch all this. Okay, now he's gonna let her do a spell with him. Like it's innocent and fun. And, and it's gonna look innocent. Looks innocent. I would love nothing more than to talk about better help for just a quick second because they're sponsoring this. All right, we're not gonna have to the that offers uncensored. Let's get it. it's, it's all just spell. What would those spells look like? Are you allowed to say, or is that secret? I'll share it with you. Mm -hmm. There's no cameras rolling, so don't There's, worry. No, that's good. It's, it's all, just you and I me I here. believe you. So this I is the Wiccans. The cameras. <laughs> and I am very practice. gullible, okay. so let's go. Good, let's go. I'm going to ask you to think about prosperity and success. Mm -hmm. and whatever that looks like for you. I already got prosperity and success. Let's see, look around me. I mean, I And again, guys, you're not going to catch a demon from watching this. You're going to catch a demon from doing this. Okay, so watching this, you're not going to get a demon from this. There's nothing explicit. I've scrolled through this portion. Don't worry. You don't need to, you know, freak out. But you will get a demon if you participate. And I want to expose this, how innocent this looks. It's going to look extremely innocent here. But that's what the devil does to bring Thanks people in. I'm in this $7 this is billion demonic. studio with 45 associates who help me at every single moment. I, I mean, you've got me here with you, so that's pretty... And you are a hefty penny. I am. <laughs> So fundamentally what you're going to do, uh -huh. you're going to make yourself a little bag. We're going to put some okay. stuff in it. Okay. We're going to decide that it's magical. Okay. So it's a decision. It's an internal belief. I think so. Yeah. It's an open okay. door. So here's what we're going to do first. I brought a bunch of little pouches. They're in different colors. And I want you to think, like, if you were going to bring success or prosperity into your life, like, Give me a color association. I am going to go with the green bag. It's got multiple different textures, and the fact that it looks handmade, to me, feels like more connection to the earth. Okay, so now I want to think about these herbs. What might you pick, like, as as kind of our base? I think the See, base they would they be spearmint. I feel they like this is most people, associated they want to get people with into this. taking care of yourself. But these are all open doors. Let me fast forward some of this, because we don't need this, to look at all this. I'm not going to so read it, crystals, so you don't have to share it with anybody else. Okay. And you don't even have to write words. You can draw a symbol that's important to you if you've got song lyrics that are meaningful to you, something that just speaks to the prosperity that you want to bring into your life. I drew a waterfall. I feel like it's a, it's a reminder to go with the flow and how even when it feels like you are falling, you'll still end up- Don't go with the flow, Anthony. Not when it's demonic, man. Not when you're opening doors to demons. Again, we think the enemy comes like with a pitchfork. And what I'm trying to show you by showing you this is the devil often doesn't come with a pitchfork. The devil comes, what does the Bible say? Type in the chat as an angel of light. He comes innocently. Back in the water, on your journey, flowing forward. I like it. Mm. Great. Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing now. And should I be popping it in here? Yeah. Okay, that and that's yours. Good. And you're going to keep that forever and ever, or until you feel like it's done its job with mm -hmm. you, and place it wherever. And that could have a huge, profound effect on the way that I go about my life. But is it all... Is it all here? Even if you've finished your spell, whatever it is, and you feel like it hasn't worked, I think that there's still value just in the fact that you performed it at all. If we think that magic is art, then it's equally valuable to sit down and create and not worry about the outcome. Let's say it is all in my head. Let's say that it's a placebo and I'm casting some kind of spell because like, I'm very anxious about a school test or I'm very anxious about whatever. Like, just the process of sitting down and going through something like this, I find calms my anxiety. Mm -hmm. And at that point, who cares? Who cares if it's a placebo because placebos work. The belief in something working is enough to make it work sometimes. And that's something else that I think makes Wicca weird and why I kind of hesitate around the idea of belief because to me, belief... So what I want to show you guys here is the innocence that they portray this as. They portray this as some innocent thing. It's not demonic when in reality, when you're doing spells, you are invoking demonic spirits. When you're doing spells, you're opening yourself up to demons. You're allowing demons to come into your life and to do what they want to do. And I know this because I've cast many demons out that came through Wicca. They came in through this movement. If you're watching this and you've you've in that you're in this world of Wicca and you think, oh, it's just nature, you know, the energy is coming up from the soil to my feet, and it's just divine power. I'm letting in these divine gods and deities, the horn god and this god. I'm letting you know right now, you are opening yourself up to real evil entities 
that want to destroy your life, that want to kill you. These things that are that make you suicidal, that make you perverted, that make you ways that you never want to be. This whole movement, this white magic, no big deal. Another form the enemy comes as an angel of light is absolutely demonic. Okay, that's Wicca. Lastly, we're going to go into Freemasonry. I get constantly asked to talk about the Freemasons, so let's go into Freemasonry. I'll go into some of the stuff the Gospel Coalition has done, their view on God, our view on God, and can you be a Christian and a Freemason, which you might say, of course you can't, but the Freemason movement really swept through the church in the 80s and the 90s, and it became a huge thing to where denominations had to say, why, are you, why you could not be a Mason? Because many pastors were becoming Masons. So what is Freemasonry? If you don't know what Freemasonry is, Freemasonry is the teaching and the practice of the secret fraternal men only order of the free and accepted Masons known as the Freemasons or the Masons. So this is a secret fraternal order. That's what this is. The Freemasons are the oldest and largest worldwide secret society with an estimated 3 million members around the world, including a million members in the United States. So it's not some small thousand people. 1 million members in the United States. In addition to the main body of the Freemasonry, there are various offshoots such as the Shriners, known formally as the ancient Arabic, um, Arabic order nobles of the mystic Shriners. They also require you to be a Mason. The basic local organizational unit of the Freemasonry is the Lodge, which is usually overseen at the regional level, state, province, or national border by a Grand Lodge. An applicant for admission to a Mason... A uh, Masonic Lodge is required to be an adult male and believe in the existence of, of a supreme being and in the immortality of the soul. As one Grand Lodge noted, Freemasonry unites men of good character who through different religious, ethnic, or social backgrounds share belief in the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of mankind. Doesn't seem that bad. Are you guys getting the theme tonight? Doesn't seem that bad. This is the way they trick you into these cults. Now, the one thing about, I'll say, Freemasonry that I spent, again, hours researching this, there's not a ton of public information because... It's a secret society. And I had a friend in high school whose dad was a Freemason and his dad literally told him, you know, if you knew about what I did, I would have to kill you. His dad told him that because it's a secret society. You get a book that no one's allowed to see, no one's allowed to read. There's very little real information on the darkness of the Freemasons, but I assure you many demons we've cast out, many deliverances we've done, those spirits came from ancient Freemasons. The experience of becoming a Freemason is divided into three ceremonial stages that the Masons called degrees. The three degrees are loosely based on the journeyman system, which was used to educate medieval craftsmen, entered apprentice, fellow craft, and the master mason. The degrees symbolically represent the three stages of human development, youth, manhood, and age. Since its founding in the 1700s, the Freemasonry has been both celebrated and also condemned by Christians and the Christian churches. Many Christian denominations have said you cannot be a Freemason and a minister. This was because many Southern Baptist ministers became Freemasons. And it was so bad that the North American Mission Board in 2002 came out with an article taking a closer look at the Freemasonry where they concluded that the teachings of the Freemasons, listen to this closely here, do not line up with Christian values values or scriptures. And this article gives nine, is it nine, seven, uh, nine, re uh, eight reasons why Freemasonry does not line up with Christian values. And then I'll talk about some of the things that Freemasonry looks at things we know like God and Jesus and prayer, stuff like that. So number one is Freemasonry is a religion. This is the first reason why the mission board, the gospel mission board said that you cannot participate in Freemasonry and also call yourself an ordained minister or a Christian. On this score, of ev on this score the evidence is overwhelming. There's no room for any reasonable doubt as Masonry's being a religion. Not only do the symbols of Freemasonry, the rites, the temples of the order, and mis unmistakably to it as a religion, but a great many Masonic authors of note empathetically declared to be just that. Of almost numberless quotations that could be given, the committee has selected a few. The author of several standard Masonic works define religion as a system of teachings, moral truth associated with a belief in God, and then declares, I consider Freemasonry is a sufficiently organized school of mysticism to be entitled as a so-called religion. He goes on to say, I boldly aver that Freemasonry is a religion, yet in no way conflicts with any other religion unless that religion holds that no one outside of its portal can be saved. Which, by the way, so that's from the Freemasonry Ideals, page 182. Christianity teaches... You cannot be a Freemason or a Muslim or a Buddhist or a Hindu or be in Hinduism and be a Christian. The Bible teaches Jesus is the only way. Christianity is the only way. There's not multiple ways here. Number two, Freemasonry involves and promotes idolatry. Okay. Masonry 
is guilty of idolatry. Its worship and prayers are idol worship. The Masons may not with their hands make idols of gold and silver or wood and stone, but they've created an idol in their own mind and they reason out of purely human thoughts and ideas. The latter is an idol no more than the former. That's from the Wisconsin Evangelical Society. It is because tenets and practices of Freemasonry conflict with bi the bi biblical gospel of Jesus Christ that our church from its very beginning held that membership to this organization conflicts with confessions of the gospel. That's the Lutheran Church in Missouri, of Missouri. So, number two is Freemasonry involves and promotes idolatry. Number three, Freemasonry promotes universalism. The heresy of universalism, that's the, the belief everybody will eventually be saved, which permeates through writings of many Masonic authors, which is a doctrine inconsistent with New Testament teaching. And that was from the Southern Baptist Convention. So three is Freemasonry promotes universalism. Number four, Freemasonry promotes a work-based view of salvation. And this is coming, uh, says, confidence in these secret orders and their teachings has always tended toward the embracing of a false hope of salvation through good works and improved moral service. That was from uh, the Assemblies of God put that out about the Freemasons. The Christian doctrine of salvation is heterosoteric. It teaches that man must be saved by another Mason's redoctrine of salvation. On the other hand, it's autosoteric. I don't even know what that means. It teaches that man must and can save himself. Freemasonry, we are told by J.S.M. Ward, has taught that man can, by himself, work out his own conception of God and see and achieve self-salvation. So the Freemasons teach you can save yourself. You don't need Jesus. This is the teaching of the Freemasons. Number five, the secrecy required of Freemasons is antithetical anti to Christian fellowship. For Christians, the secrecy practiced by the Freemasons poses a problem that secrecy of any kind is destructive of fellowship. The Christian community is not a secret fellowship. It's an open fellowship. And, and Freemasonry swears you to secrecy. So do the Eastern Star, the Rainbow Girls, all these secret societies. The Brotherhood of Secret Oath bound societies is incompatible with the fellowship of the Christian church. Matthew 5.33 says, Again, you've heard that it said to you of old, You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven or by the throne of God. So the Bible says, we are not to be taking oaths. And the Freemasons, you must take an oath to even join. Number six, Freemasonry promotes a false claim about the name of God. And the, the Freemasons have this name, Jabulon of God, and they believe that the God of the Bible's name was changed, and they have a false name of God, and they claim that, the, again, the God that we serve is a fake made-up name, and that their ritualistic God, ja, I, think, I think you pronounce it Jabulon, is the God, and again, that's another contradiction. Number seven, Freemasons omit the name of Jesus when they use biblical texts and their rituals. Frequently in Masonic rituals, the inspired word of God is mutilated, and in many instances, the mutilation consists of omission of the name of Jesus Christ. In Mackey's Masonic ritualistic, the name of Christ is omitted from 1 Peter 2.5, 2 Thessalonians 3.6, and in 2 Thessalonians 3.12, with reference of the elision of the Savior's name from 1 Peter 2.5, the following explanation is offered. The passages are taken with sight but necessary modification from the first epistle of Peter. So, what he's saying is, in the Masonic teachings, they take out the name of Jesus and they modify it so that Jesus' name is not in it and the Christian name Jesus is not in the Bible. So again, number eight, Freemasonry promotes pagan and occult-like texts and doctrines. The recommended readings in the pursuance of advancing degrees in the Freemasons of religions, philosophies, which have many pagan and or occult-like material, such as writings of Albert Pike, Albert Mackey, which we talked about earlier, Manley Hall, Rex Hutchins, W.I. Wilmhurst, and other authors, along with their works such as Morals and Dogma, A Bridge to Light, The Encyclopedia of the Freemasons, and The Meaning of Masonry. So a lot of the texts that they recommend are occult texts and occult doctrines. So because of those eight reasons, no Christian can be a Christian and a Freemason biblically. So let's look at a few of the Freemasons' views versus the Christian views. Because again, the Freemasons say, oh, you can be Christian. Oh, you can be a pastor and a minister and a Freemason. I heard a guy recently who's a pastor talking about he's, he, he's also a Freemason. So the Freemasons will say, you can join our secret society and be a pastor or a minister as well. And there's many people high up in Hollywood and high up in society that are Freemasons. Many people in politics are Freemasons as well. You'll see that little Freemason compass there. It's 100% undoubtedly certified secret society cult that is not biblical, that is an open door to demons. So the Freemasonry on God. All right, this is what the view they have view on God, and we're almost done here. Offensive terms such as Jabulon and so-called secret name of God are used. 
Masonic, uh, Masonic writer Albert Pike, in his book of words, explained the first two syllables of the secret name of God in his discussion on the old French rituals. This is probably Jabulum, incorrectly copied, which, as I have shown, meant the product of which preceded, which issued the OM. If correctly written, it's compounded of you or Yah, Yahu, Baal or Bell. So he's saying God's name is really Bell or Baal. And we've mis mismatched God. We've made the name wrong. Thus combining the names of the Hebrew, Phoenician, and Hindu deities to, indu to induct that they're reality the same in some old rituals as Jabulam. So they have a God that's completely made up in some old Hindu deity that they've mixed words. It's complete deception. Christianity, This is now this is Christianity's view on God. Christianity rejects all pagan deities as false gods and goddesses. Let me say that again for those of you sitting in the back tonight. Christianity rejects all pagan deities as false gods and goddesses. The idea that followers of Om or Baal worship the true God of the Bible but knew him by a different name is false. No pa pagan deity is a representation of the God of the Bible. The difference between the God of the Bible and the pagan deities are far greater and significant than the name used to refer God. No Christian should have any part of rituals that honor or glorify pagan deities. Exodus chapter 20 verse 4, you shall not make yourself any idols or form anything in heaven or above on earth beneath the waters below. Deuteronomy 7:25, the images of their gods are to be burned in the fire. Deuteronomy 11:16, be careful or you will be enticed to turn away and worship other gods and bow down before them. Psalms 81 verse 9, you shall have no foreign gods among you. You shall not bow down to an alien god. Isaiah 42 verse eight i am the lord that is my name i will not give my glory or praise to idols first john 5 21 dear children keep yourselves from idols what am i trying to say to you tonight that we are never ever to worship idols goddesses or pagan gods or baal and call it the god of christianity and what the masons teach is that we mixed up the name and these pagan gods of baal they used to worship are actually the gods of, the, of scripture or the true gods and that's completely false demonic twisted and perverted all right, oaths. Let's talk about oaths. We're almost done here in like two minutes, three, four, five minutes, maybe five Pentecostal minutes. Freemasonry. Rituals that contain excessive oaths are used. The obligation sworn by the entered apprentice. All this, and this is the t quote from their text, all this I must solemnly and sincerely promise and swear, binding myself under no less penalty than that of having my throat cut from ear to ear, my tongue torn out by its roots and buried in the sands of the sea at low watermark, where the tide ebbs and the flows in 24 hours, should I in the least willingly or unwillingly violate or transgress my apprentice obligation. How demonic is that? This is the oath they have to say. They have to say they bind themselves and they'll have their throat cut from ear to ear and their tongue torn out and buried in the sand if they break their oaths in the apprentice obligation. That's directly from when you enter apprenticeship in the Freemasons. The fellow craft degree candidate promises, so then that this is the second rank you have to promise. I that all this I must solemnly and sincerely promise and swear, binding myself under no less penalty that having my left breast torn open, my heart plucked from th from thence, and given to the beasts of the field and the birds of the air's prey, should I in the least willingly or un unwittingly violate or transgress my fellow craft obligations. So now you rank up and you have to say that I come under oath and swear that I myself will have my my heart torn out of my chest if I disobey. Then the master mason must say this. All this I must solemnly and sincerely promise and swear. And I've taken out some words, okay? So we're not doing the oath here. I've taken out, I'm just giving you the context of what they have to oath. Bind myself to having my body severed in two, my bowels torn from me and burned to ashes, scattered before the four winds of heaven, that there will be no remembrance of me of or masons of such a vile wretch as I should be. Should I in the least knowingly violate or transgress my mason obligation? So help me God, keep me steadfast. So did you guys see here how demonic and it gets worse and worse as you bind yourself to these oaths? Say, this is what will happen to me if I break these oaths. It's no wonder my friend in high school said his dad said he'd have to kill him if he told him what the Masons do. Some Masons claim these oaths are taken too seriously. So now that's what the Masons believe on oaths. Christianity teaches that we are not to make excessive oaths. Therefore, Christians should avoid taking any oaths found in Freemasonry, which are much worse than the oaths found in the New Testament. Christians should let their yes be yes, their no be no. Christians should take all oaths seriously and not give any oaths rashly. James chapter 5, verse 12. Above all, my brothers, do not swear, nor by heaven on earth or anything, let your yes be yes and your no be no, or you will be condemned. So we are not to take excessive oaths. Okay, Jesus Christ. What is the Masons view? And we're almost done. Freemasons. 
Many of the recommended readings for advanced degrees of the Masons contain pagan and occult-like teachings. Several of these writers deny the uniqueness of Jesus, deny the deity of Jesus. For example, uh, Rex Hutchins writes this in his Masonic teachings. The purpose of teaching the concept of a Messiah and the Freemasons is to point out universal, universally the well-developed religions of the ancient world. We see reference to Dionysus of the Greeks, um, Sosiosh of the Persians, Krishna of the Hindus, Osiris of the Egyptians, and then Jesus of the Christians. So he puts Jesus with all these pagan demonic gods. The purpose of these cultural messiahs was to find human form a source of intercession with deity, in particular one who as a human had been tempted and suffered the daily pangs of life so he can be expected to possess particularly sympathy. So what Ma Masons teach is Jesus is, all, is like all the other gods. You, the, the Christians just need something to believe in, just like the Egyptians need Osiris, just like the Hindus need Krishna, just like the Persians need um, Saishis, just like the Greeks need Dionysus. Like we're just, Jesus is not divine. This is what they teach. He's not unique. He's just another God among gods. If your pastor's a Freemason, it's time to find a new church. Really. If your pastor's a Freemason, it's time to run and find a new church. I'm telling you that boldly tonight. In addition, some of the writers of the Masonic texts confuse false pagan beliefs with the teachings of Christianity, and they give examples I won't give. Okay, Christianity. The comparison of Jesus to the pagan deities Dionysus, Sosiosh, and Osiris de denigrates the deity of Jesus Christ. The words of Hebrews 2.18 apply to Jesus and Jesus alone. The Bible teaches that Jesus is unique. He's not just one Messiah among many others. The Christian doctrine of the Trinity is the belief that there is only one God, yet the one God is in three distinct persons, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. These three have distinct personal attributes and are without division in nature, essence, or being. The Masonic Trinity is a complete misrepresentation of the Christian belief to compare the triune God of Christianity with Hindu deities is blasphemy. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Salvation is found in no one else. There's no name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 5. For there is only one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Okay, let me read that again. If you're taking notes, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Okay, lastly, and then we're going to pray and we're going to break this deception. If you're in this deception, we're going to break it tonight. We're going to pray for you. We're going to cast those spirits out of you here. Salvation by works. The Freemasons, many of their writings teach salvation can be done by works. You could even save yourself. You don't need to be saved by faith, repentance, or reformation. Having repented and reformed and bound yourself to service to God is a firm promise and obligation. And then talks about the Christian, the Christian view of God is wrong and that you can be your own savior. So they teach by works, by charitable deeds, and by your own stuff, by your own merit, you can save yourself. The Christian teaches that the um, mer meritorious deeds can make one acceptable to God is a false teaching. There is no deed, this is what the Christian teaches, there's no deed that will make you acceptable before God. Only the grace of God that comes through faith in Jesus Christ can save a sinner from the judgment of sin. The saving grace of God is incompatible with any form of works as a requirement to salvation. The teaching that salvation is some way dependent upon our good works is a false gospel, a false hope, and is not found acceptable before God. Romans 11, 6, and if by grace, then it is no longer by works. If it were by grace, we would, it would no longer, if it were by works, it would no longer be grace. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, for it is by grace you've been saved through faith and is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that nobody can boast. Okay, so in recap, Satanism is demonic. It is a cult. It worships Satan, the Satan of the Bible, not the Satan they've made up. Wicca is also demonic. They serve the horn god and the feminist female god, and they serve a, pan, a, a multitude of gods, and they do magic, they do rituals, and they believe in demonic forces and spirit in the spiritual realm and opening yourselves up to the universe and the spirits. And then the Freemasons, they deny the deity of Jesus. They preach a works-based salvation, absolutely demonic. They take oaths to foreign gods. They teach Jesus is just one God among the pantheon of gods, absolutely cults. And so tonight we are going to pray. If you're in these cults, we have almost 5,000 people watching right now. We're going to pray and ask the Lord to deliver you and to save you from those. If you're not a believer, if you're watching from and you're part of these cults, tonight's the night that you can repent. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Peter preached a message and the men said, what must we do to be saved? And Peter's response was, repent. You must turn from your sin 
Put your faith in Jesus. Believe in what he did on the cross. Believe in the fact that he died so that you can be saved, that while you were in sin, Christ died for your sin. Tonight is your night. I was an atheist. I came to a church altar and said, God, I don't believe in you, but if you're real, changed my life and God radically changed my life. I've never been the same. God can do that same thing to you tonight. Father, I pray over every single person watching this broadcast. I pray that, that Lord, that you would bring biblical repentance, that Lord, you would bring biblical salvation. Father, we know that in your word, it says that we must have, we must pick up our cross. We must lay down our life and follow you. And right now I pray, Lord, that those watching this would lay their lives down before you that they would serve you, that they would repent of their sin tonight, God, that they would turn to you, put their faith in Jesus. Right now, I pray in Jesus' name. Lord, let them put their faith in you. Let them honor you. Let them worship you. Let them know you. Reveal yourself to them tonight in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, that you'd reveal yourself in a way that you've never revealed yourself before. You would open up their eyes in a way that you've never opened up their eyes before. I pray for a supernatural experience with the Holy Spirit. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would pour out right now upon every person listening. Lord, I pray that you would pour out your spirit. Bring people out of Satanism, Lord. Deliver them from this satanic movement. I pray, Lord, you would deliver them from this Wicca movement, the, the, these Wiccans that think it's no big deal, that are struggling with suicide and anxiety and depression, and Lord, that are bound. I pray, Lord, right now, deliver them. Someone in the chat just said, I'm a prisoner of yoga. I pray, Lord, deliver them from this new age teaching of yoga. Deliver them from these unclean spirits that have come through tarot card reading, divination, medium, psychics, yoga, participation in the new age. I pray, Lord, you would deliver them according to Luke 11 by the finger of God. Holy Spirit, right now, have your way. We commend every unclean spirit to come up and out right now in Jesus' name. We commend every unclean spirit to leave you now. All Freemasonry ties, every tie into Satanism, every tie into Wicca, every tie into Islam, every tie into Mormonism, every tie in Jehovah's Witness, all these cults. I pray, Lord, that you would deliver them by your mighty power that you would break the power of the enemy right now in Jesus' name. Satan, you are bound. We bind you in Jesus' name. You have no right. You have no authority. The Lord rebukes you. Every spirit must go. We command every spirit to go into the abyss and never return right now. Every spirit, go into the abyss and never return. The blood is against you in Jesus' name. The blood is against you in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus is against you. We bind you now. We come against every foul spirit. We say, get up and out now in Jesus' name. You have no legal rights. You have no legal authority. The Lord rebukes you tonight. Leave now. Go back to where you came from in Jesus' name. The blood of Jesus is against you. We break your power now in Jesus' name. Every spirit must go. Every foul spirit must go. Every spirit of fear, every spirit of addiction, every spirit of anger. Right now, maybe you don't believe in it. Well, let me pray over you if you don't believe it. Let me call these things out of you. We command every spirit to come up and out. There's power in Jesus' name. There's power in Jesus' name. Every Freemason spirit, every ancient spirit from the Freemason bloodline, we command you out now in Jesus' name. Every spirit that's coming through the new age, we command you out right now in Jesus' name. You have no power. Every spirit that's come in right now from witchcraft, from Wicca, we command you out now. Every spirit that's coming through Satanism and pride, every spirit of pride, we bind you now and command you to leave. Leave in Jesus' name. Leave in Jesus' name. You have no right to be there. We call you out now. Leave these bodies. Leave these bodies. You know, in Matthew 12, Jesus said the demons leave and they come back saying, I'm coming back to my home. They think your body is their house. Demons think your body is their house. And tonight, we evict them by the power of the Holy Spirit. We drive them out by the power of the Holy Spirit. We've been given the power Mark 16 says, and these miraculous signs shall accompany them that believe in my name, they'll cast out demons. Right now, every spirit must go in Jesus' name. Pack up your bags and leave now. The blood is against you. Go now. Every spirit from abortion, go now. Every spirit from rituals and seances, incantations, right now, hexes, we break them in Jesus' name. Every unclean spirit, we break your power and your assignment. You have no power. The finger of God is against you. The blood of Jesus is against you. We thank you, Lord, for delivering. We thank you, Lord, for breakthrough power, filling them with your Holy Spirit. Every tormenting spirit is bound. Every tormenting spirit is bound. While the world celebrates darkness, we cast it out now. While the world invites demons in, we command them to leave now in Jesus' name. Leave now in Jesus' name. Father, fill every person now with the Holy Spirit. I pray, Lord, by your power, I pray you would fill every single person by the Holy Spirit. 
Fill them up, Lord. Have your way. Do what only you can do. Do what only you can do, Lord. In Jesus' name, fill them with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Have your way tonight, Father. Bless them in Jesus' name. Anoint them in Jesus' name. Man, tonight is revival night. While everyone's celebrating Halloween, we're having revival night in here. Revival night. We peaked out at 5,100 people. Tonight, we have 4,500. Thank you, Lord. God's going to continue his work. If you want, again, tonight is free. All of our broadcasts are free. We have 970 videos on YouTube for free. If you want to give, you can. It's not required, but it is appreciated. If you were blessed tonight, I spent hours researching. I know there's a lot of other people live. There's a lot of other live streams going on that you could have went to. I think like four or five of my friends are live right now, and I appreciate the fact that you're here. Um, if you want to sow into this, into the research, into the time and effort we, I put into this, you can sew in, you can scan the QR code, you can become a monthly partner. Ask your husband or wife. Don't do it without their permission, but say, hey, I think we should monthly partner with this. We monthly partner with Netflix. We monthly partner with uh, Hulu. We monthly partner with YouTube Premium. Let's monthly partner with this ministry. And if you want a monthly partner, you can scan the QR code right there. It'll take you right to the monthly partnership. Make sure if you're not subscribed to the second channel, we have a video going up in 30 minutes on the second channel. I'm not getting off here. I'm going to hang out for a bit. We did four services yesterday, guys. I almost didn't go live today. I was like, I'm so tired. But I really felt the strength of God tonight. I really felt the power of God tonight. God giving me energy and strength to even study today, even bring you guys this live stream. I really did. You know, I was tempted to just premiere my sermon tonight. I was like, I could. But I just felt the strength of God saying, you need to do this. You need to expose. And even studying these, guys, I'm studying these so that you don't have to. You don't need to go look into Satanism. I'm giving you what you need to know. I'm ta- I'm keeping out all the really dark stuff. I don't want to spark your curiosity, but I'm giving you in my the best of my ability the stuff that you need to know so that you can feel you could feel uh, you know informed that you're not ignorant to Satan's devices that you could help people come out of these things. And also, we're reaching people in Satanism. We're reaching people in Wicca. We're reaching people in the Freemason. People don't think it's evil. There's pastors that are Freemasons. They don't even know. So there you go. Uh, You can give with the link that's pinned in the comments. You can give there. There's a link pinned in the comments. If you, if you're those of you asking to give, you could also give down below in the description, but there's a PayPal link. There's a website link. um, There's a Venmo link right there that you can give to. I know we also tried some reaction during the month, the teaching. I don't know if you guys like that or not. We've, we don't really ever watch videos or look at websites, but I wanted to add that in and mix it up, you know, put a little bit of different stuff in there to keep you guys, you know, just informed. So I hope that you like that and enjoyed that as well. And yes, God's calling many people out tonight. We had, the last time we did a video on Mormons, some of you are like, why are we talking about this? The last time we did a video on Mormons, a girl literally wrote in, donated and said, I've been going to a Mormon church for several months now and thank you so much. This video has pulled me out. I will no longer go and now I'm seeking the God of Christianity. So trust me, these videos do reach people. These videos do reach people. Uh, Alex, the Cash App is not active. You can give on Venmo, the website, or PayPal. Uh, Cash App, unfortunately, doesn't work. Our account was frozen, and they won't tell us why. So we don't know. Our, our account's frozen on there. I don't know if people are doing chargebacks or what, but it was frozen. I enjoyed the reactions. Okay, I'm glad that you enjoyed me mixing it up. Maybe we'll do that more in the future. And yeah, Halloween night. Hey, we're here punching the devil in the nose, exposing the works of darkness. And, you know, maybe next year we'll get everybody together, all the demon slayers and other people will have a prayer meeting or something on Halloween night. I know Jenny's live right now as well doing deliverance, which is awesome. I know uh, Pastor Mike was premiering or he was live at six as well when I went live. And so there's uh, several other people that are just punching the devil in the face on Halloween. Someone just said, Bahar said, your videos took me out of new age spirituality. Praise the Lord, Bahar. I'm so glad that God used me to take you out of that. I love what God is doing. I'm going to bring on more ex-New Agers to share how they've come out. I'm lining up some other guests that are that were in the New Age and they've come out of the New Age. So praise the Lord. And we had a huge stream tonight. We haven't had over 5,000 in a long time on our Monday night. So praise the Lord that we had a huge stream. I thought it was going to either be like 1,000 people or a lot of like 5,000. It was 5,000. So praise the Lord for that. All you guys here, we really, really appreciate you. Make sure that if you haven't liked the video, you do like the video. If you're watching at home on a TV, do me a huge favor right now. Stop what you're doing and hit the like button. That helps us out tremendously. Like, 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 like. If you're not, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, let's read some of these donations. Again, the donations are not required. They are much appreciated. All of our content is free. I'll keep saying that because I don't want you to ever feel like you're missing out because you don't have money. If you don't have money, it's okay. Um, We have people that support and keep us going. Elizabeth Huntington said, keep sharing God's truth, love, and message. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Melina, thank you so much, Melena. Is it Melena or Melina? I think it's Melena. Thank you so much. 
Melissa said, thank you, Isaiah, for all that you do. It can't be easy and it does not go unmerited. I wish I could give more. God bless you and the family. And then I got your prayer request. I pray for people like you. Thank you so much, Melissa. Don't ever say it's not enough. It, it's always enough. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Christian said, thank you for the teaching. Thank you, Christian. We appreciate you. Linda and Serafina said, powerful knowledge tonight. Thank you for what you do. God bless. Thank you so much, Linda and Serafina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're awesome. Mary Pabone. Thank you so much. Richard Lebrun. Lebrun, Lebrun, thank you so much. Freddie and Priscilla, thank you for the generous donation. So thanks for all you, all the in-depth hard work and many hours you put into exposing these cults during tonight's study. All glory be to God. Thank you once again. May you be blessed with this offering. Thank you so much, Pr Freddie and Priscilla. And I also want to say, those of you that are in the comments, like, my church doesn't do these type of teachings and are, are we supposed to do this? Is this bad? Listen, number one, we're not your church. Number two, we're called to expose the works of darkness, the Bible says. So here's the deal. If you don't like these teachings, I have 900 plus videos that you can go watch. I have videos on the entire book of Acts, the entire book of Revelation, every single verse, book of Romans, every single verse. We, we're doing Philippians, every single verse. I have deliverance video uh, videos. I have end times videos. I have reaction videos. Like I have call in videos. If you don't like this type and you're like, no, then go watch something else. It's like, it's really not a big deal. You can watch something else because there are people here that want to see the enemy exposed and want to learn about this stuff in a, in a biblical, godly way. I and mean, there's really not hardly any Christians that are out exposing this stuff, doing the research. And, and I'm not the only one, but I'm, my point is we need more people going out and doing this stuff. So if you don't like it, there's other videos for you. That's why we post a video every single day. And I will be putting these into small videos like the Satanism, the Freemasons, and I'll make one of the, what was the other one, Wicca. I'll make them separate videos for you guys. I'll have them on the channel this week so that you can send them out and do all those type of things. Thank you. Jennifer Brown. Thanks, Isaiah, for all you do. You're such a huge blessing in my walk. Thank you so much, Jennifer Brown. Warren and Donna. So thanks, Isaiah, so much. Great information. Thank you so much. Maxim, I always felt like I was missing out when I didn't celebrate Halloween. Now it's a blessing. I'm completely done with it. God bless you. Thank you, Maxim. We'll do we'll do something every year on Halloween. So you'll never have to miss out. We'll be live every year on Halloween. Okay. Next year we'll do mass deliverance on Halloween or something. Last year we did a service of mass deliverance on Halloween. Jeremy Garcia said it was me from the last video telling you about the carne asada, uh, carne asada tacos in San Antonio. Oh, thank you, Jeremy. Caesar said, thank you, brother, for allowing the Holy Spirit to flow. Thank you, Caesar. Lucas said, thanks for you doing, you're constantly exposing evil. Thank you, Lucas. The only one that doesn't want me to expose evil is the devil. Okay, he's the one that doesn't want me to expose him. Melanie Edwards said, God bless you, Isaiah. Thank you, thank you, Melanie. Also, let me remind you guys that I will be streaming The Chosen Season 3. Dallas Jenkins, the producer, was so gracious to comment on my video of The Chosen. He thanked us for making the video and he said, I'm working on getting your copyright strikes for The Chosen videos down because if you don't know, my season one and season two videos all got taken down because of copyright. So we're working on getting those removed and he said, yes, you can stream. So the, the producer of The Chosen gave me permission, says, yes, I can stream The Chosen. Yes, I can watch it live on stream. So yes, we will be doing it. Thank you, Dallas Jenkins. Um, appreciate you. Fisher of Men, thank you for the donation. Also, guys, we have a documentary that we're a part of out in January that I'll be announcing. Um, we have a video going live at 8 as well on the second channel, and I'll link that here. And I'm going to hang out with the chat and read comments and do all that good stuff as well. Let me read the Venmo really fast. I just read all the PayPal. Jim, thank you, bro. Jim, let me get some. Hold on, hold on. Let me get some confetti for Jim. Thank you, bro, for that generous, generous donation. Generous, generous donation, brother. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. Okay, here we go. Venmo. The Venmo crew's strong here. Thank you. Stephanie Ramos, thank you so much. Thomas Morton said, outstanding teaching. Blessings you and your family. Thank you, Thomas. Denia Bartholomew, thank you so much. Melissa Gone, thank you. Sam Bowman said, love your YouTube channel. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Sam. Cynthia Givens, thank you. Daniel Alleybone Ali said, Isaiah, I missed you, bro. Thank you for finally teaching on the Freemasons. You demand. I did see you in Jersey when you came in the core group retreat. Love you. Long time. Thank you, Danielle. Lucy Zab said, Jesus Christ is the only Lord. Amen. Thank you, sister. I will hang out with the chat, guys. So if you want to hang out, stay around. Sabrina Malgoza, thanks for taking the time to teach. I will always learn something. God bless you. Carissa McCarty said, thank you. Thank you, Carissa. Martin Montoya said, keep it up. Lorianne Reese, thank you so much. Said, so uh, best way to spend my time on this day. Most years I spent on Halloween foolery. Thank you, Isaiah, for the best party ever exposing darkness. Let's go. Thank you, Lorianne. Miles Adams, thank you. Rob Mendoza said, we love you from Tri-Cities. Thank you. Sean Kelly said, tonight's live. Thank you, uh, Sean. Alex Garrett, thank you, brother. I love you, Alex. I appreciate you, bro. I still remember when I first met you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. One second. 
Okay, let me read some of these comments here. Sorry, I had to text my brother about something. Devin and Undra, I love you, Isaiah. We thank you for taking time to spread the truth on Happy Hallelujah Day. Thank you, Devin and Undra. Clinton Terriano, God bless you, brother. What Bible teachers do you recommend me to study to learn about more of the Bible's history? Thank you, Clint. Um, I would just read a Bible commentary if you want to learn about the history. I don't know exactly. I, I like Matthew Henry's concise commentary. Yeah. Lillian Newman. Thanks, Isaiah, for saving me from Freemasonry, witchcraft, new age, astral projection, tarot card, satanic attacks, incubus, incubus, praise his name. Thank you, Lillian. Praise the Lord. You are awesome. Okay, guys, you guys can keep giving there. Again, apologize. My lips are so dry. They've been like preaching four times yesterday and then being out in the cold in the morning at night. Uh, my lips got real, real dry here. So I apologize if you see me like rubbing them, licking them, all that. I know it's sorry. Okay. Someone said, Lord, destroy the curse that were put on me. Our sideways cross is demonic. Yes, I would not have a sideways cross or an upside down cross. My family have been blessed. Awesome job, Isaiah. Thank you, Richard. Come to Ohio maybe in the future. Mandela's are demonic, guys. I don't know what Mandela's are. Yay, the chosen. Yes, we'll be streaming the chosen. I celebrate Hall no ween. Try coconut oil. I need I have chapstick somewhere, but then it makes my lips all shiny. And it just looks weird. Why won't you speak at Bible colleges? I have spoke at Bible colleges. I'm just not taking bookings right now because I have over 400 bookings this year that I haven't take that I haven't taken. I've been using chapstick all day. Yeah, it's just as I'm preaching, I can't put on chapstick. What's the second channel name? Let's spam mods. We got to be spamming it the whole time. All right, we got to be spamming the second channel channel throughout the broadcast because I want to make sure that people are linked up with the second channel. Actually, what was that link to? That's not supposed to be that link. Okay. Let's put the second channel in the comments though. Is that going to work here? Yeah. There you go. There's the second channel. Make sure you are sub. That channel is taking off right now. We need you guys all to sub to the second channel. We have a new clip being posted in five minutes on the second channel. Pastor Greg Locke had an Axe 19 burning. Praise the Lord. That's amazing. I can't believe we had 5,000. I hadn't noticed the lips. Okay, good. It's all good. Praise the Lord. Lord, destroy the works of the enemy. Let's go doorkeepers. Isaiah, so blessed by your ministry. Thank you, Jennifer Brown. Appreciate you. Why did you make a second channel? Great question, Amanda. The second channel is podcast clips. And I made it because our podcast is two hours and a lot of people won't watch it because it's too long. So we're going to put the clips from the podcast, like five to 10 minute portions on the second channel. So I don't want to flood my main channel with a bunch of clips, but I want to have a second channel where you can watch the clips, set, share with friends and family, and it's been taken off. So praise the Lord on that. Stephen Marlowe says, so excited for Georgia. Hope to meet you. Thank you, Stephen. So yes, make sure you subscribe to the second channel. It is taking off and you can share those clips. I'm thinking about y'all. I'm like, hey, look, I want you to be able to share the videos with friends and family. And you guys always say, I tried sharing with my friend, but they said two hours is too long. I, I got it. I get it. I'm there. So these 10 minute, five minute clips are just amazing to share with friends and family. So I'm doing it for y'all. So go there, watch it, you know, all that good stuff. Ryan said, I emailed you in the notes. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Where's the podcast? It's on YouTube and Facebook and Spotify and Google Play. Just type in Revival Lifestyle Podcast. I literally have a YouTube playlist called Revival Lifestyle Podcast. It's live every Tuesday night, the podcast. Tomorrow we'll be having a live sermon, but usually it's a podcast every single week. Last week we had it on John Ramirez. Ryan's notes are legit. Yes, they are. I don't know how he takes them so good. Is it okay to wear a cross necklace? I don't think it's wrong. I just think it's a little bit weird to wear the thing that like Jesus was tortured on, even though, yeah, it represents Christ and all that stuff. I still, I, I personally would not wear a cross necklace just because I'm like, it's literally a torture device. I, I don't know. I could be wrong. You got to go with your own convictions. That's just my conviction. Please come to Colorado. I will. Maybe. Today is about Jesus. Praise the Lord. Great way to spend Halloween watching this video. Thank you for spending it with me, Richard. Appreciate you. Thanks for being here, guys. I put a lot of time into these videos, so the fact that you guys are here is, is very... I appreciate it. Okay, let me try the QR code. Someone said it wasn't working. Let's see. Yeah, it works. I literally just scanned it, and it took me to my website. If you scan it, it'll take you to the website right there, right when you scan it, and you can choose a one-time or a recurring. Make sure you choose. If you want to do a one-time donation, you do that. Do not put recurring if you don't want to do it recurring. Yeah, it's right there. I just scanned it on screen. So it should work. It should take you right to my website. Yeah, we've had a big crowd tonight. This is the biggest we've had in a long time on a Monday night. 
The cross represents Jesus dying for us. I totally get it. I get it. And if you don't have any conviction, then go ahead and do it. Go ahead and do it if you have no conviction. I'm just saying my personal conviction is that it's a torture device. And so I know it represents what it, all that. And I don't think it's wrong for you to wear it. I just, you asked my personal opinion. That's my personal opinion. I know what it means though. But yeah. I can't scan it. I don't know why you should be able to if you have your phone out. You should just open your camera app and put it up. It works for me. Okay, so if you can't scan it, just go to the, the comment that's pinned. Or just go to isaiahsaddlebar.com slash partner. Okay? So if it doesn't work, just go to there. Winter Maldonado. Great teaching this evening as always. My son's being made aware of this demonic things. We renounce every generational curse on me and my bloodline be blessed. Thank you, Winter, so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're not supposed to remember his death, but his resurrection. Amen. Why can't I like the podcast? You should be able to. The podcast is on every platform. Elk and Moose Lodges are, are Mason, Freemasons. Yeah, do not get involved in the Freemasons. It's demonic. And trust me, guys, I know by making these videos, I'm picking fights. When I made the video on Islam Mormons, I had a bunch of Muslims in my chat spamming and giving me crazy threats. But hey, we're going to expose the works of darkness and we're not going to be afraid of the backlash. So it is what it is. I know there's pastors that are masons and they're going to be mad and whatever. I don't care. Don't be involved in a demonic cult then and you don't have to worry about it. Why don't you have super chat? Because super chat, YouTube keeps 30%. That's why. So I only have channel members and I have PayPal donations, which 100% goes to the ministry. Website, 100% goes to the ministry besides the fee that they all charge to process the payment. And YouTube super chats, they take 30%. That's why I don't have them on. It only shows the dislike option. That's weird. I'm not sure. If you haven't liked the video, please like the video. Right now there is, let's see. Oops. We lost the channel here. Let's go back to the channel. How many people are watching right now? We have 3,000 people still on YouTube. And we have 3,500 likes. So if you if you haven't liked the video and you're still watching on YouTube, please like the video. And thank you for 3,000 of you still being here. That's very humbling. That's crazy. Thank you. When are you going to hit the gym, bro? You keep putting it off. I know, soon. I've been, guys, I've said this before. This month and next month are the busiest months of the year for me. Gerilyn, thank you. I'm not kidding. It's the busiest month of the year. I can't even remember the last time I had a day to just do nothing. I've been very, very busy. I'm leaving to Arizona on Saturday. I have a busy week. Just, you know what I mean? Help me out here, guys. I'll get in the gym. Don't worry. The moment I start, you'll know. Forgot to like. Sorry. Don't be sorry. Just like. It's all good. Tap, tap, tap. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're getting new bodies. Forget the gym. Amen. Calvinism? No, I'm not a Calvinist. I'm just a full gospel Christian that believes the whole thing. Do voice changers? Uh, I probably won't break it out tonight because then I'll go like another 40 minutes. So, next stream. Next stream. Is ICC a cult? I don't know what the ICC is. Isaiah's channel members join button disappeared? Really? It really disappeared? I still see it on my side. I'm not sure why it disappeared. Has anybody joined the channel members tonight? Type one if you can still see the channel members join. If you're not a channel member and it says join somewhere on your screen next to subscribe on my channel, let me know. Is the button there? Carl, Carl, Carl. Okay, I'll put Carl up on screen. There you go. Can somebody let me know if they see the channel members button? Tattoos, your opinion? I personally will not get any tattoos. That's my personal conviction. You still see it? Okay. You still see it? Yes, it's there. Okay. I'm not sure why some of you don't see it. Yeah, do not wear a cross with Jesus on it for sure. Jesus is not on the cross. So if, you, if you're wearing a cross, make sure he's not on it. That's, that's off the top. What's the lie for? Uh, you got to go back and watch it. We, we talked about Satanism. We talked about the new uh, the Wicca, and we talked about the Freemasons. We're at the end of the broadcast right now. I see it. I see it. Okay, okay. It's still there. It's still there. I don't see it. Okay, some of you do. Some of you don't. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Live tomorrow. Tomorrow will be, be a live. Tomorrow will be a live sermon premiere. Will not be a podcast, as we usually do. Because uh, it's been a long Sunday. I did four services yesterday. I did this live stream that I've been spending hours preparing for. And I've had no breaks or anything. And I have a sermon that I want to premiere. And we're going to premiere it tomorrow. So that's why. And I don't have a guest. The guests that I've been inviting on, I haven't heard back from them. So I, I don't have the guests that I thought I was going to have. 
Are you Pentecostal? I'm Pentecostal. I'm charismatic. I'm full gospel. I'm, I believe it all. I'm Pentecostal in that I believe in Pentecost. I'm charismatic and I believe in the charismatic gifts. So yeah, I'm not any like one thing. Isaiah, you fancy, huh? How? How am I fancy? I don't know. Am I? Why not Jesus on the cross? Because Jesus is not on the cross anymore. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's alive. So having Jesus on the cross is wrong. He's not on the cross. I'm going to call you Butter because you're on a roll. Thank you. Spirit-filled. Yes, I'm spirit-filled. There you go. Exposed Calvinism. I have a few videos on it. That's got to be a dove. Listen, I downloaded this bird. I, I mean, I didn't download him. He's real. He joined the stream. And it said dove on the video file. So he is technically a dove according to whoever made that, made him. And here's the thing. He was a pigeon when we first showed up. I didn't like him. He was ugly and scary, but he's been born again after listening to all my preaching. Now he's a dove. So he's not a pigeon any longer. He's not a flying trash rat. Change the lights to blue. You already know that I'm going to say yes. I can't say no to that. So, okay, I got you. Here we go. Blue lights. Blue lights incoming. Wait, where's the blue lights at? I'm going to have to do this. How blue? Is that blue enough for you? I'll have to do it manually there. What happened with Andrew Tate? Go watch my video on YouTube and it explains what happened. Andrew Tate downloaded and posted my video. Matthew. So go watch my video on the channel and it tells all about what Andrew, Andrew Tate's take was. Okay. I'm trying to read these, but they're coming in very fast and I have slow mode in. I have slow mode on and it's still like insanely fast. How do we have still 3,200 people on it? That is actually crazy. We still have, let me just make sure that's right. Wow. Y'all are hanging out tonight. We still have 3,200 people on the broadcast. I would, I hate ending when there's this many people hanging out. Why am I cool? I'm cool because you're cool. You got ghosted on Halloween. I don't know what that means. Bobblehead, the bobblehead's here. His head's starting to turn. I don't know if he's having neck issues like me, but literally he's just been sitting here and his head's starting to turn. So I don't know what's going on. Super slow mode. It's on slow mode right now. Can you do the fart no noise for old time? No, we're not doing that. Fraternities and sororities, cults. I would not join a fraternity or sorority. When are you starting to stream The Chosen Season 3? As soon as it's released. I'll be streaming it on Friday nights. What does it mean to partner, Isaiah? Oh, if, to partner on my website is a financial partnership, if that's what you're asking. We love you, brother Isaiah, just not more than Jesus. Thank you. I'm glad you don't love me more than Jesus. That's good. Thoughts on Christmas? I don't have any thoughts. We celebrate it as the birth of Jesus, even though I know it wasn't that day he was born. And we just still celebrate it around that time as his birth. Do you still do deliverance? All the time. I did deliverances on Sunday. I did deliverances in Nashville. I did a Zoom deliverance on a guy off stream last week. Isaiah, you're fantastic. We appreciate you sharing the gospel. Thank you. I literally preached on deliverance yesterday. All the whole service was me preaching on deliverance. How's the puppy? The puppy's doing good. What's the difference between exposing darkness and exposing false teacher? Uh, exposing darkness is what we did tonight and exposing false teachers are exposing somebody who teaches something false. But I'll tell you, all, majority of the Heresy Hunter channels on YouTube aren't really exposing anybody. All they're doing is exposing the fact that they don't believe in what the people they say are wrong believe in. So they say, oh, that guy believes in deliverance. He's a false teacher. All you're saying is you don't believe in that part of the Bible. It's not that the guy's a false teacher. is that you don't actually believe what the Bible says. So yeah, I've found very few videos of people actually exposing false teachers and the person was a false teacher. And I would unsubscribe from any Heresy Hunter channels because all they do is breed fear, dissension, division, and accusations. Even some of the big videos that are like about how I'm a false teacher, several of them have flat out verifiable lies in them. And that's what they do is they accuse, they do it for views, they do it for clicks. If you guys don't know the motivation and you're confused why these Heresy Hunter channels are so popular is because when you get a view on YouTube, you get money ad revenue, you get money. So if a guy puts out a video, Isaiah Saldivar exposed or whatever, and gets 20,000 views by using, you know, drama, he's making money off that. And they say, oh, these guys ask for money. Well, they're actually making money every time you watch their videos because they have ads. All the Heresy Hunter channels on YouTube that I've seen, all of them have ads on their videos. So it is about money at the end of the day. Trust me. And also remember, the devil's the accuser of the brethren. If you're making every video you're making accusing the brethren, 
then you're not working for God. You're working for the devil because he's the one that accuses the brethren. And that's that. No one in the Bible had a ministry calling out false teachers. It's not biblical. There's no such thing as discernment ministries in the New Testament. They're motivated by division, conflict, and demons. Agreed. Can you say my name? Uh, Mary Cielo? Mari Cielo? I don't know how to say it. Is that right? Mari Cielo? Mary Cielo? I'm probably saying it wrong. Does your wife have a ministry on YouTube? No, she doesn't, but maybe she will in the future. My wife's ministry is taking care of my children and the house and being an amazing wife and supportive so that I can do this. Someone said, follow the money. Believe me, I promise you, they're motivated by money. It's just the, the hypocrisy is very strong in the whole heresy hunter movement. Do you remember my name? Of course I do. Danielle. Look at that. I remember you. Good wife. Yes. Or Elk Lodge is a cult. It uh, sounds like it to me, but I'm not sure. I have videos on the prophetic if you want to learn. Are you making a DVD deliverance course? I'm not just because DVD is, is old school. I just have it on videos on YouTube. It's much more accessible on YouTube than DVDs. I'm trying to read all these comments, guys. I'm I'm struggling here. There's a lot of comments coming in. It's 3,000 people, 3,200 people right now on here. Do you think it's better to ignore false and ignorant comments or respond in a truthful and kind way? Ignore them, Jonna. Ignore them. You will never. You will be miserable if you live your life trying to respond to negative comments. Completely ignore them. That's why I don't do any response videos. That's why I don't respond to negative comments. I responded to one guy that was calling me out in comments. And I deleted it an hour later and it was the mistake. Don't give them the, the free press. Don't give them the promotion. Don't give them the time. That's what they want. They're obviously bored if they're making videos about you and their grown men. If a grown man is spending hours making videos about another grown man, then there's, they definitely want it. They for sure want attention. Just weird. All right. I'm reading. I'm reading. I'm reading. That's a good response. Noted. Do you listen to Hillsong worship? Not really. My mom said, I love you, son. I'm always so proud. Thank you, mom. I love you too. And I'm so proud of you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for giving birth to me. What's your opinion on heavy metal? My view on all music is lyrics. The lyrics are what matter. I'm very excited about The Chosen. So am I. Low self-esteem makes people judge others. Amen. How often do you read the Bible? It depends on the day, but I read it every day. Have you ever heard of the Yoruba religion? I have not. Andrews Tate Father is part of the CIA. I don't know about that. Isaiah the Fossil Prophet. Thank you, bro. I'm an old Fossil Prophet. Thank you. Aren't you tired? I'm very tired, Vanessa. I am very tired. But hey, the Holy Spirit energizes me. We're going to go five more minutes here, and then we're going to jump off, even though I'm sad there's 3,000 of you still on here. I'm not sad, but I'm sad to jump off. I'm going to also direct you guys to the second channel. In fact... I'm going to get the video from the second channel. I'm going to send you guys all over there. And then I'm going to read the comments over there. Okay. So when we're done, I'll send you guys all there. It's a four minute clip. And then I will read the comments and hang out there. And you guys can post like I came from the channel. That's the kind of our thing is we're going to be sending people there uh, to the new video that was just posted. I just, I'll, I'll spam it before I end, but let me read a few more of these. How do you feel about tithing? Uh, I don't have any particular feelings. I have a video on uh, why I took down my video on tithing, where I kind of talk about tithing. How do you deal with low body image as a Christian? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by low body image. Who's your favorite demon slayer? I don't have one. I love all the guys. I don't have a favorite. That's the right answer. Will you post Sunday sermon from my song? Yes, I'm posting it tomorrow night at six o'clock. So tomorrow night, there's 3,000 of you on here. Tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, I'll be posting that stream. This is crazy because y'all are just here. Like, there's still 3,000. You guys just won't leave. I love it. I love, love, love it. A false prophet means your convictions are hard and like stone. Hey, How do you uh, handle your kids wanting to celebrate Halloween? They don't want to because I've always taught them it's a demonic holiday. So my kids are like, it's the devil's birthday. And it's demonic. We don't celebrate it. So they don't even ask about it because they, they've known that we don't do anything on it. 
Can both men and women cast their demons? Yes. God meant for me to be here tonight. I'm glad you're here, Christopher. Shout out to you. Dr. Brown has a good video on tithing. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I'm sure he does. Most of the founding fathers were Masons. Love you, Isaiah. Love you too, Shawnee. Do you have a video on the truth of Catholicism? Yes, I have a video on Catholicism on the channel. And are Christians and Catholics the same? Uh, spoiler alert, they're not the same. That's why they're called Catholics. We're called Christians. But you can go find that on the channel where I talk about why you cannot be a Christian and a Catholic at the same time. Thank you for the video. You're welcome, Alessandra. Uh, Alessandra. I'm late, bro, but Jalen shouted you out. Awesome. I'm, I appreciate you, Jalen, for shouting me out. Lydia cast out demons with Paul. I manifested a demon tonight for the first time. I pray you got some deliverance. Do witches hate worship music? Yes. What do you think about Psalm 69? I don't know it by heart, so I'd have to look it up. Can you do a live stream exposing Catholics? I already have a video on Catholics, but I could do... And uh, y'all really want me to get in trouble here. Because if I make exposing cults part three, and it's part one of the is Catholics, then I'm for sure going to be taking heat. But hey, it's all good. I got the heresy hunters on YouTube after me. I got the Muslims after me right now. I have the Jehovah's Witness, the Mormons. The Mormons are just nice though, okay? The Mormons are nice about it, but now I have the Satanists coming after me. Now I have the Wiccans after me. Now I have the Freemasons. I mean, now y'all want, want me to go against the Catholics now? I have a video on it though already, but I can make it on the next part three, maybe. Part three coming soon, we'll see. God bless you, Kalagua family. Appreciate you guys. Lomita, California. Lomita. Bless you. 2,800 still on? Yeah, we have on 3,100 right now on YouTube and Facebook. Book of Enoch segment. It's a big mystery. Yes, I'll do a video on the Book of Enoch. I'm I'm just been busy. I've been busy. But yes, coming soon. Yes, Book of Enoch video coming soon. Hey, Zay, when someone passes away, uh and you're present, can a demon from you enter them? From the deceased, if you have an open door? Mm, I wouldn't worry about that, Jennifer. I wouldn't worry about that because a demon can enter you when you open a door at any time. It doesn't have to be through a dead person. So yeah, I wouldn't trust about that. Was it in the original manuscript? No, the book of Enoch is a historical document. It's not, it wasn't canonized. Lord protect Isaiah, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Prayer is the number one thing. All right, I'm gonna start spamming the link i want you guys to go here i'm posting it in the comments i'll pin it actually i'll pin it so that's where i want you guys all to go that's the video that was just posted on the second channel please subscribe to that channel please let me pin it please go there watch that video it's only five minutes and then comment down below in that video came from the stream now there's three thousand of you on here right now so if we can get everybody over there that would be absolutely incredible to boost that video three thousand views and even if we even if a thousand of you went and commented that would be massive massive so do me a huge favor i've been live for two hours go over now to that video okay i'm gonna put stream ending now i love you guys appreciate you guys i will see you guys live premiere tomorrow night i might be live friday if not i'll be live monday again but go to this video there's the link i'm spamming it mods spam it spam it spam it don't be scared to spam there's the link there's the link you can click it i post it on facebook as well I would love you to go over there and comment and just leave me a nice comment and I'll read it. I'll read it right now. Go leave me a nice comment there. Go watch it, comment, like it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Love y'all. Good night. There you go. For those of you asking, there you go. All right, go to that link. Go to that link, y'all. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Go to that link. Thank you guys. Good night. Love you guys. See you guys in the other channel.